crazy. I finally got my suction cup mount, so I'm really happy. It seems to be working great. Hopefully this shot isn't too shaky. It was a it was a three dollar mount, but it seems to be working pretty good. Sweet, I never get this light. to do on the green car uh, so not a lot to do today but I figured I'd record it do a little how-to video on how to do an oil change on one of these cars it's super simple first I have to go out and buy the oil come the fuck on man the front of the store is not a parking lot I love coming to Walmart of course they don't have Magnatech in the weight I want so I guess I'm getting edge and a filter he drove around on the donut till it blew. Now he's putting the bald alloy back on. Seems legit. Also stopped and grabbed some lunch, a couple of subs, but the world's greatest donuts were BOGO, so I had to buy them. Let's get started. Obviously you're going to need new oil and a filter, but you're also going to need a 19 millimeter socket to get the drain plug off. The Mazda 2 takes OW20 oil, and I use castor oil products because, in my opinion, they're the best, and it's what Mazda uses and recommends. In addition, I got a 6607 oil filter, which, oddly enough, is the same filter that every other Mazda I've ever owned has taken, so at least I'll never forget what kind of filter to buy. Yeah, I know, I bought a Fram. They're kind of shitty, but it was the only one Walmart had that wasn't $15 for a damn oil filter, so it'll do the job. I forgot to empty the pan last time. Let's see if I can do this without spilling it. Good enough. You put that with my 20 other jugs that I have to take and recycle. Noisy. Start off by removing your oil fill cap from the valve cover. That'll promote oil draining out of the engine when you open up the drain plug. You'll find the oil filter at the front of the engine, right next to the oil pan, and it's in a great spot. You just reach up, twist off, the excess drains into the pan, and there's relatively no mess. All my other cars, they used to have the oil filter right on the side of the block underneath the intake manifold. I'm sure we've all been there, and it dribbles down and makes a big mess. This is, this is a lot better way to do it. And then there's the drain plug right on the back of the oil pan. Quick easy, all in one spot. Drain plug first. Let's see how badly I spill this one. I don't know why this is so tight. There we go. That's better. I can never get the positioning of the bucket right. I always under or overshoot. See? It's okay, I don't think I spilled that much. Now, time lapse of it draining. Nobody cares about that. Ten minutes of dripping later. Let's see if I can do better with the oil filter. Ooh, didn't make it to the floor. All right, none made it to the floor. Not bad. Anyone who's ever changed oil on a car knows you take a little bit of the old oil, add it to the new rubber seal on your new filter. Some people say use new oil or old oil. I just use the old oil because it's right there. And then you screw it on and you're good to go. It just needs to be hand tight, nothing crazy. Lower the car so that it will be level when you add the new oil to the engine. The Mazda 2 takes four quarts of oil which is kind of inconvenient because five quarts is cheaper than buying four individual quarts. But that's okay, eventually I'll just have a free oil change. Then, start the engine and let it idle for a few minutes to circulate the new oil. Check underneath for any leaks, and once the engine has cooled down, check the oil level once more before finishing up. Alright, that's pretty much it. 
A Mazda 2 oil change is really simple, like I've said on other projects. Anybody with a basic set of hand tools could tackle this in probably less than an hour. Uh, I'm also going to rotate the tires on this car because it's a good habit to get into having your tires and your oil changes on the same schedule. So I'm just going to do that off camera because it's rotating tires. Nobody wants to see that. But before I end this episode, I wanted to make a note that the channel has reached 25 subscribers. And that's a small number, but it means a lot to me. There's 25 of you out there that have stuck around and I guess enjoy me rambling on about car stuff and my little projects here. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Let's keep it going. Also, I wanted to make a quick note. Uh, you may have seen in the background of this video today, these big old wheels. They're from an older car of mine and uh, I'm probably just gonna sell them off, but I was thinking maybe, you know, I could get some feedback from you guys and do a show about painting wheels because they need to be painted pretty badly. So if you guys want me to paint these wheels and have an idea for a color that you think they would look good in, uh, leave me a comment below and uh, maybe I'll do that in a future episode. Uh, for reference, they're, they're Rotas, yes, I know, Rotas. I bought these a long time ago before I knew any better, and I'm going to sell them cheap. But uh, they're Rota SVNs, so they're a replica of the Volk RE30 for reference of what they look like. I was thinking of silver, bronze, or mag blue, because Volk does all their wheels in that nice deep mag blue color, and I thought about doing that. A similar color comes in spray cans at the local hardware stores, so I thought about that. Uh, if you guys want me to paint them, uh, I'll look into doing that. Leave a comment below. Again, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in a future episode. How come Matt Farah can never drive with the windows down and always has problems with his hundreds of dollars of equipment? My homemade microphone seems to be working just fine. I'm just kidding, Matt. I love your one takes. Don't be mad at me.